All right, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the data logger we use here, which is the CR1000 from Campbell Scientific. So all of our sensors go into the CR1000. It measures data every one minute, and there are a number of channels and ports and things in here that you need to understand before you go out to a station and have to rewire a sensor at our site. The, sen the data logger includes a power source, which is located at the very top, two ports, an RS-232 port and a CSIO port a grounding lug, which keeps all the equipment safe from lightning, and a bunch of channels located on the left side there. So the channels can be broken up into in a number of categories. One, you have analog outputs. These analog outputs are channels that, you know, sensors only report one thing back, so it's an analog channel. Each one of those analog channels can be defined by a blue number. So there are numbers 1 through 16. These are all analog channels. Then you have excitation channels. These are sensors that need a, a pulse at a certain time sent to them to make recordings. We usually use this for uh, either leaf wetness or wind direction. There are usually three of them and they're either nominated, noted as VX1, EX1, VX2, VX3, EX2, EX3. There are two pulse channels. These are P1 and P2 on the data logger. And for wind speed, it's a pulse count. So every five seconds, it counts the number of pulses that have come back, and it calculates a wind speed from there. Those are located in the top left. Then you have digital channels. So digital channels are the ones on the very bottom, C1 through 8. These digital channels are able to uh, report back multiple parameters from the same, same sensor. So a WXT520 is a perfect example. Uh, we have one output, and it outputs everything back uh, for all six parameters. We also have different powers. Uh, the power outs you notice on the, on the left side there, we have two continuous 12 volt channels, a switch 12 volt channel, and a five volt channel. So the five volt channel is for our precipitation, continuous 12 volt, and switch 12 volt for sensors that need power either continuously or turned on and off. Finally, we have ground channels, and these are noted in between the analog channels by a symbol that looks like an inverted Christmas tree or the letter G on the bottom row for digital grounds. So all sensors need ground channels, so when you wire stuff in, you need to make sure that the right cables go into ground channels. The two ports, RS-232 and CSIO, this is how the data log communicates back to us in Raleigh or that you can do on site to check the values of the data to make sure that the values coming in are legitimate and they make sense for the parameters that are being measured. Now we'll talk about wiring a sensor into a data logger and the, the process you need to use for that. So the only tool you'll need to wire something into a data logger is a flathead screwdriver. These flathead screwdrivers, put it right there, these flathead screwdrivers can be found inside the white enclosure bro box. Usually when you open that enclosure box, it'll be right on top of the data logger. So all you need is a flathead. And I'm going to go through this step by step. I'm actually going to wire one here live right now. It's going to be for an RM Young that is going to be at 10 meters. It's a 10 meter RM Young. So um, all you have to do to wire a, a cable into a sensor. So for the RM Young, the red cable goes to P2. So it's a pulse, it's wind speed, so it's pulse. So what you're going to do is, you're going to take right there, these are all flathead screws. You just loosen it. You don't have to unscrew it all the way, just loosen it a little bit. Then you're going to take the cable, you're going to make sure it goes all the way in, then you're going to tighten it. And then I, I kind of give it a tug every once in a while just to make sure that the data coming back is, or that it's in all the way. So if we continue, um, I'm going to do the green cable next. Let's see if I find the green cable. The green cable goes into uh, P, or A7, sorry, A7, analog channel. So the blue cable goes into VX2. Now, if you don't know where these cables go, uh, watch the videos on how these sensors work. I go through where each uh, cable goes in the channel throughout the video, and then uh, Usually when you go out in the field, there should be a wiring diagram with you as well so that you can remember where cables go. 
Now the other four cables we have here all go into analog ground. And with analog ground, you can put them anywhere. They're all, they all do the same thing. What I like to do though is I like to kind of keep them near the cables we have. Now, you could put all four of them into one analog ground channel. It's very tough to do though. So what I like to do is I take, I'll take two and I'll put them in one. So I'll take two. And what I'll do here is I'll, since they're going into ground, I will twist them. I'll put them, there's an analog ground channel up here. And I'll take these two and I will twist them as well. And I'll put it next to, as long as they go into ground, it does not matter. So that is how you do a basic wiring job at an Econet station. If multiple cables go into analog channels or an excitation channel, and the only time this will ever happen is with the blue cable going to VX2 for both of our wind sensors, I would not twist them together. I would just try to put them both in and tighten it up. Same thing for the power channels. There are some sensors, there are multiple sensors that need power and sometimes multiple go into the same channel. Try not to twist them, just try to put them in one after another because if you twist them, you could cause issues in terms of the voltage going to the wrong sensor.